Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be my entire portfolio update number two. If you've been following me for a little while, you'll know that I started a monthly update for the channel. The highlight of the channel is me building my TFSA from zero to maxing it right out. But I do have a lot of other accounts and I felt that it was important to share them because the way that I set my asset allocation up in my TFSA has to do a lot with all of the other accounts because my asset allocation kind of spreads across all of those accounts. So this will be portfolio monthly update number two. If you're new to the channel, my name's Darren. This is the Crazy Canuck Investor, where I try to make investing a little bit easier for beginners, because let's face it, there's nothing that gets you ready for that first day that you're gonna start your investing journey. And I do it by sharing my journey with all the ups and downs along the way. There's lots to get through in this video, so let's jump right into things. Now today we're gonna to be using Passive, Passive is the software that I use to track all of my uh, dividends, all of my trades. It's a place to bring everything together in one place. Now, I use two different brokers. I use Quest Trade and Wellsimple, and there are a lot of different brokers out there that you can use. And this nice thing about Passive is it brings it all together in one place for one snapshot. So let's jump right over to Passive and have a look at uh, the entire portfolio. So for now, we're looking at the main screen of Passive. We can see that my total contributions this year are $27,363. I am going to start off with a caveat for this particular part of the Passive program. It is not accurate. Now I do wanna share it because I do wanna be somewhat transparent. You can see that there are a bar graph and it shows contributions that I've made uh, as I've started my investing journey. Now, for those of that are new, my investing journey started in April of 2023. I am 51 years old, so I miss the boat and I don't want other people to miss it. So that's why I'm sharing things from my perspective. Now, you can see that the bar graph shows uh, very little contributions over the last couple of months. It kind of peaked out in April. Uh, what I've discovered is that for some reason, uh, Passive doesn't recognize transfers within Wellsimple. Wellsimple is the main broker that I use, and I have been transitioning my banking from uh, the big banks over to Wealthsimple. But in doing so, I opened up an account, uh, a savings account essentially. I make 5% interest on it, which is part of the reason that I did it. But now when I move money from that account over to my trading account, Passive doesn't recognize it. So this part is not accurate. I do have a help ticket in with Passive and I'm asking them for some assistance to determine why this is the case because I can't manually put in this information. All right, enough about that. Let's jump over and see what the total is. You can see it on the screen here. So the total portfolio across all of my accounts, and I'll list them off, is $264,394. So I have a spousal account. If you're not familiar with a spousal account, uh, that is where I make the contributions, I get the tax credit, and the account is actually in my wife's name. So she's gonna withdraw that money uh, later in retirement at a lower tax bracket. Um, I make a little bit more money than she does, so the strategy is that we put the contribution into that account to offset a little bit of taxes on my part with the RRSP. But like I said, the main focus is the TFSA to max that out. So we do uh, both. We're contributing to that TFSA, but also getting some tax credits through the RRSP just to lower our uh, taxes at the end of the year in the event that uh, I was to get some bonus or something like that and wasn't quite prepared for it, or let's say they didn't take enough taxes off. So the account's up to $264,394. So uh, you can see underneath it, I've set, uh, and this is another part of passive that's great, I can set up a uh, target of uh, what I want to accomplish. So if you're really young in your 20s, this will be a whole lot longer than mine. Uh, I'm gonna retire in about nine years. And you can see here that that target date um, is 2034. Now, it's a rough date, it could change, but that's the date that I've set. And so we can see that the total to target that I'm going to try to reach is $500,000. Um, now, I do have a pension, so that's why um, this is not a huge amount of money. If you don't have a pension and you intend on making lots of contributions, this will look completely different for you, but for me, this is what it looks like. Uh, so, uh, we're 53% of the way there, and of course, each month that continues to grow, 
And so we're gonna go through each of the accounts. So we're gonna see different changes that I've made within those accounts and look at the, uh, uh, the dividends that I've earned over the last month, the month being uh, June. So June 1st to the end of the month. Uh, so we're gonna jump over and have a look at that. Uh, reflecting back on last month, we were at 257,889. Now, uh, jumping up to 264,000 from 257,000 is not all growth. Some of that's contributions. So the ratio that I'm using currently is 20% to invest, 30% to save, and 50% uh, is for general sort of revenues to spend on bills and things of that nature. Now, something else I want to point out is that I am teaching my children this. I wish I'd learned it. I'm 51 years old. I missed out on a lot of good investing time because I just didn't know. Again, that's the reason I started the channel. But now I'm teaching my children how to do this. So they've got the same information now and we've set them accounts up and you'll see one of them in here. Um, it's essentially an account that I'm using to teach them and eventually um, I want to open up an account that they can use that's um, in um, trust in my name uh, that they will eventually take over. Unfortunately, Wealth Simple doesn't do that right now, so I need to figure out how we're going to do that. It might be with Questrade. I'm not 100% sure right now. All right, so let's jump into the portfolio and uh, let's start going through each count and see how they're performing. Okay, so the way Passive works, I showed you a snapshot of the front page to show you the uh, contributions that I've made as well as the growth and then the target that I've set uh, as far as where we want to take this account. I've zoomed in now on the left hand side of the screen. Um, you are going to see all the accounts listed. You can see I've got my spousal account, my TFSA, my RRSP, the kids TFSA, which in fact is my wife's, but we're utilizing it for my kids for learning purposes. And then at the bottom here, we have uh, my wife's RRSP. And you can see um, with the RRSP, I have American funds and Canadian funds. Um, and so it actually breaks it down for Canadian funds as well as US funds uh, within uh, both accounts. And so we'll jump over and we'll start with the spousal account. Now you can see the little blue dot there. That little blue dot indicates that there is money. So every time I either make a deposit or I have a dividend that comes back into the account, it is automatically uh, shown to the program and then that little blue dot pops up. I also get an email to show me uh, what dividends have been paid, the contributions that I've made, so as well as uh, how much money is available for me to trade. And then of course, any trading activity that I do, I also get notifications for that. So let's jump into the spousal and we'll see what's going on in there. Um, not too many changes in here. One thing that we're doing with the spousal is the tax return that we got this year. I split it about two thirds, one third. So two thirds of the tax return that I did get is gone into the spousal. You can see here that I have $861 in cash. Um, the vast majority of that is the last uh, bit of money from the tax return that I've thrown in there. Um, so we're up to date as far as putting all the tax return money in and it's gonna be like a revolving door. So every year, the tax returns till I retire will uh, get paid back to us if there is one, if we've made enough contributions to offset taxes. And then we're gonna throw that right back into the spousal RRSP. Again, we're kind of recycling that money uh, year to year. So to right now, we have $861.47 in that account ready to trade with. That's in Canadian funds and I have $62 in US funds. Now, if I'm gonna convert funds within uh, this account, this is with Questrade, um, I use Norbit Gambit, which is simply a, a way to convert Canadian funds over to US funds uh, within the account. Now, if I was gonna make this conversion uh, with Wealthsimple, I get charged a 1.5% fee. And in order to uh, maximize that, uh, that's why we use Norbit Gambit. Now I haven't done a video on that and it's probably something I will do uh, when I convert these funds. In fact, I will actually do a short video to show you how that works um, and the potential savings that are there for you as an investor. All right, so scrolling down, um, the, the money that's existing in the account, uh, I have set up an asset allocation. And uh, for those of the, you've been following me for a while, you know that uh, I did some videos recently explaining asset allocation. I'll put it up on the screen if you haven't seen that video. 
I think an asset allocation is very important. Essentially what you're doing is you're breaking down by percentages how much of each security that you want to invest your money in. Now this isn't a hard and fast rule. You don't need to follow it you know, to a T. Um, but for now, I've been making some big changes within these accounts, so I do wanna follow it until I hit all these asset allocations properly. You can see here uh, that at the top of the screen we have VU and I have the target set up in blue there. It's 30% and right now the actual amount of money I have invested in that security is 27%. So essentially we're almost there or pretty close to being there. Now IEMG, which is emerging markets, is set for 16% and I only have 4.6% in there. So I need to be able to build that up to hit that asset allocation before I start putting money into say other securities or at least that's the theory behind it. I am a little hung up on this one right now. I have a big chunk of money in HYLD and uh, I'll talk a little bit about that. So I'm not too sure. I. And when I talk about the um, other account, you'll see the dilemma that I'm facing. I could take that money and do some other things with it, but I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do with it right now. All right, so here in the blue, it's telling me based on the amount of money that I have, what I should be putting uh, my uh, money into. So with the amount of money there, it's telling me should buy one share of IEMG and 27 shares of XEQT. Now, XEQT is an all-in-one. Now, some of you will know this, but if you're new, I have to talk to both audiences here. XEQT is a all-in-one fund. So what I've done is I've set up, essentially with my asset allocation, my own all-in-one. Now, I am investing in XEQT um, to have uh, both in the event that uh, you know my beginner investing skills don't work out so well. I guess I'm hedging my bets a little bit. Again, I've only been at this for a little over a year. Uh, I'm certainly more comfortable now, but um, I, I don't want to uh, find myself in a position where I made a big mistake. So I am investing in an all-in-one fund. Meanwhile, I'm setting up these other asset allocations. So I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with this money just yet, because this just came into my account uh, yesterday. So we'll talk about that in a bit. All right. Let's jump over to, uh, now I'm gonna skip my TFSA and my RRSP. The reason for that is that the main point of this channel is me building those up. And I'm sharing this part of my portfolio with you so that you can see the difference. So if you wanna see what I do with my TFSA and my RRSP, go into my playlist. You're going to see day one all the way through to um, this past post when I did it. And then of course, next week will be the next one. Every two weeks, I make a, a deposit into the account and then I go ahead and I make my investments in the TFSA and RRSP. Main folks of the channel, go look at the playlist and check it out. One other thing I should mention too is if you want to get started with Wealth Simple, uh, I'm going to put up on the screen here a link, um, uh, a code actually, that you can utilize to get yourself started. It'll put a little bit of money in your account and I get a little kickback as well. It's a great way to support the channel. I'm not monetized at this point. Um, so that would be fantastic if you want to use that link if you're going to get started. Um, I have to give a big shout out because I have had a number of viewers use it, which is fantastic. So thank you very much to all of those that you if you've used that link. The other thing I'd like to acknowledge too is that uh, with Passive, there is also a link in my video description. You can use that link and then uh, again, you'll get started. Uh, same thing, I get a referral code from that, full disclosure. Um, and I have actually had some people use that. So again, a great way for you to support my channel. That's absolutely fantastic. But it also helps you out because you get started with your investing journey. All right, let's jump over to my kids, TF, kids pardon me, TFSA. Uh, this account is sitting at $1,397. Now this account, uh, I've done some videos on it, go back and try and find them um, in my playlist. But essentially what we're doing is we're making slow, steady, small contributions. Um, and I'm adding a dollar to that every month. The other thing that we're doing is the kids are responsible for pop bottles. All those pop cans and pop bottles that you have are worth money. and. You know, there's a video I did about how to build that first hundred thousand dollars. It's investing in my view is not just about all the big gains. I mean, that is a great part of it, but it's also about being smart about how you manage your money. And one of the things I realized is 
If you return all your pop cans, that's worth money. It's going to compound itself. It's going to grow. So my kids are responsible for returning those pop cans. And then every couple of weeks, we would then take that money and we contribute it to their account. So while we're making regular contributions to it, we're then adding that extra money to the account so that it will grow that much faster. You can see the asset allocation and all of the uh, different securities here that are in the account. We got ZSP, XEQT, XEI, Plaza Riot, HYLD, and Manulife. Now, I've, I've got this pretty diverse. We've got single security, covered call, we've got a REIT, um, we've got all in one, the S&P 500, and then uh, we have a, a monthly um, paying uh, security there with XEI. Pretty broad, I recognize that. Again, just trying to teach my kids a little bit about this stuff. Okay, so we're at the screen here uh, that will allow me to view all of the uh, money, all of the trades, all the dividends, and so on and so forth. Uh, what's nice is you can do custom settings. So we're gonna jump in here and we're gonna change this to June the 1st, um, and then of course, end of uh, June. And we just simply then pick which account we want. So right now we're gonna look at the spousal account and then that is going to uh, generate a, um, a picture, if you will, of that account. So we can see here the contributions that have been made. Net contribution 68.50, and we've been doing that for the last 10 months. Um, the net change on the account is uh, $15,000. $15, and of course the rate of return we see here is 16%, which in my view is pretty decent. Um, again, total beginner here. So I know some people will may disagree and tell me that uh, that's on the low end, uh, but when you consider that I never invested for 51 years of my life, or 50 years I suppose it was when I started this, uh, and I wasn't earning much more than, you know, say a GIC at three or 5%, I think this is pretty awesome myself. So investment growth there, $9,000. Now here is the part where it shows us the dividends. So for this month of June, we just click on here. It will show you a breakdown through the bar graph of each security and what it paid out. So the total amount of dividends that were paid in this particular account for the month of June was $346. So my average amount of dividends is $267 in this account, because keep in mind, some pay monthly, some pay quarterly, and then some pay uh, every six months. And in fact, some securities don't pay dividends at all. Depends on your investing strategy. Um, I'm in a little bit of everything, I guess you might say. Um, you can see here that I've paid $185 in commissions over the last year. The one thing about Questrade that you do need to know is uh, that Questrade does charge commissions. If you're buying an ETF, there is no commission. Um, if you're selling an ETF, there is a commission. And if you're buying and selling single stocks, so an example of that might be Coke, um, you will get charged to purchase the security and to sell the security. Uh, as you can tell by uh, so far, if you follow my channel, most of my stuff is in ETFs. I do have some single uh, position securities. I'm just trying to reduce some of those fees uh, right now until I get very comfortable with my trading strategy. And then maybe at some point these fees won't be all that important anymore. Um, it tells me that we've uh, saved $365. That's because of Well Simple. So those would have been costs if I had been using a platform like Questrade that I would have had to pay. Okay, so on the left, you can see the bar graph that shows all the dividends that have been paid into this count since I set it up. The top one right now is HYLD. It's paid out 1,058 in dividends. And then the next one is QQQY at $469. And then keep going down $396 for XEI and so on and so forth. Down here in the bottom right, you can see that the total amount paid out is $3,520 in dividends. All right, we're gonna jump over into the activity side and it will show us all the activity over the course of the last month of June. Here's all the activity within this account. Nothing major here. You can see I made $150 contribution uh, and then turned around and um, purchased some uh, securities. Now, uh, I did make another contribution of $700, you can see here, and this DLR was me doing the Norbit's Gambit to convert the Canadian funds over into US funds. And with all that money, we made some purchases within that asset allocation that I set up. You can see IEMG, 
Um, the sell here of DLR was the other half of the trade to convert the money from Canadian to US funds. So basically you buy a Canadian uh, security, which is DLR, and then they convert that over to a US security. And when I sell, I get charged five bucks, uh, but it's a whole lot better than 1.5% on the entire amount. And consequently, then I wind up with US funds. Um, so uh, down at the bottom here, another pot, um, XEQT. So not a great deal of activity. Um, definitely lots of dividends paid out. And I showed you those in the uh, other part with the bar graphs and whatnot for the month. All right, let's jump over to my kids uh, TFSA. And we'll look at the activity in there. So we're going to go over. And we're just going to switch this to my kids TFSA. Okay, here we are in the kids TFSA. So you can see that for we've been making steady contributions to this account. Um, every month, as I said, small amounts contributed to the account. Now you can see here in April, there was a, a large amount of money. I uh, inadvertently deposited money into the kids uh, TFSA. Um, and unfortunately, when you withdraw it, it shows this uh, big blue withdrawal saying that you actually withdrew drew money. But all happened was I put the money in and then quickly sent it over to the right account that it was supposed to be in, which was my TFSA. So a bit of an error there and it just skews that uh, bar graph. Now contributions into this account are $1,411. We've been at this for 12 months. The net change is $1,593. Um, you can see, unfortunately, the rate of return is affected because I withdrew that money. Um, it is definitely not minus 102%, but I guess, if anything, that's some entertainment for you guys. The investment gross $182. My average monthly dividends in this account are $6. And you can see, because we're using well simple, zero fees or commissions. And of course, it's telling me there's no estimated savings because, well, we're not using Quest Trade or anything like that. The annual dividends we've earned in this account are $72. And of course, covered calls tend to pay the most, but of, like I did in my last video, if you wanna go watch it, covered calls do produce monthly income, but they don't grow your capital. Something to think about if you're looking to get into covered calls. So we got $39 with HYLD, $18 with XEI, and so on and so forth. So let's jump into the activity side and we'll have a look at what we did in the account for the month. All right, so starting off at the month, you can see that we make uh, regular contributions and purchases. As I described to you before, when it comes to Wealthsimple, when I transfer money from um, our savings account uh, or all-inclusive account, essentially what it is, over to these accounts within Wealthsimple, passive doesn't register the deposit. So you're seeing here all the buys that I made in the first bit here on the third, XEQT, Plazit, XEI. That money was deposited, but it doesn't show up because of this issue with passive. Uh, it's very unfortunate. Again, I've asked them for some help and so far I haven't heard anything back from them. We can see we got paid at a dividend of 58 cents with HYLD. I have drip set up. Uh, so what happens is when that money is deposited into the account from the dividend, it's automatically then reinvested back in. Um, and you can see here, we continue to make some buys with XEI, HYLD, ZSP, and so on and so forth. And all of this is in uh, combination with that asset allocation. So I look at what passive suggests and then I, I make those purchases based on uh, that. Uh, so uh, the last purchase of the month here was we bought ZSP, which is a uh, S&P 500 fund. Uh, we bought $19 worth of that. Now that's a fractional buy because the share price is much higher than that. Um, so in this account, there's a lot of fractional purchases that happen, but that's just the way it is. If you're using a um, broker such as Questrade, you're not going to be able to do fractional purchases. Again, one of the bonuses of Wealthsimple is you can make uh, fractional purchases. Now, they're not the only broker that would do that, but they're certainly the one that I'm using right now. All right, let's jump over into my wife's RRSP. This is the one that I made the most changes in. So right now, you can see... The accuracy of that asset, excuse me, the asset allocation I set up is only 82%. Not quite there, but we're certainly getting closer. Total value, $145,449. Uh, just a slight amount of money in there to make some buys. Um, and I just haven't done anything with that money yet. Um, probably wait till I get some more dividends in there. Um, so just looking at the asset allocation, we can see VU, which is the S&P 500, um, is... Uh, right on par. We're at 29.6% of a target of 29. So we're just slightly over it. 
XEI, um, a little underweighted, XEQT, same thing. Now these are the two funds that I've added in and these are the biggest changes you'll see in this account that uh, I did this month. So I pointed out HYLD, I had a fairly big holding of that. So we'll jump into the activity side here on the dividends and um, I'll show you what I did in this account. Okay, so here we are in my wife's RRSP. Now this is a snapshot of June only. Again, you can see some of the contributions that were made, but if I'm moving money again for Well Simple, we don't see it all. So net contributions, it says 2,641. That is incorrect, uh, but either way, that's what it is. Now it says we've only been contributing for three months. That's because this account used to be with Quest Trade. And about three months ago, I moved it over to Well Simple. Why did I do that? Uh, because what it does is it increased um, our uh, status with Well Simple and increases the interest rate that we're earning, um, as well as we got a bonus for transferring the money over. And it didn't make any sense to me to leave this account with Quest Trade and be charged all of these fees while I'm making trades. So net change says 10,796. Again, these numbers are not going to be completely correct because uh, I moved that account. The rate of return is 7%. That is also not completely correct. Uh, although it is growing, so eventually that will average out. Um, uh, we have an investment growth of $8,100. Average dividends are $231. Again, these it, this is skewed a bit. You can see they all of a sudden jump up. That's because I moved all this money over and things changed. No fees or commissions. Um, and then a bar graph showing us uh, annual dividend of $3,000 um, for our dividends. Again, not completely accurate. I do have a spreadsheet. Maybe I'll jump over and show you that right now. Okay, so this is the spreadsheet that I have set up uh, to track the dividends outside of passive as well. Um, and that's in the event that there was some issues with what uh, passive's tracking. Uh, so you can see here, I do it month by month. Uh, and then here at the bottom, uh, the total for Canadian funds was $353 in dividends. Uh, and then U.S. funds 336 for a total of $689.64 um, for dividends uh, just in the month of June. So you can see that passive wasn't completely correct. Um, just for uh, interest sake, the entire portfolio has earned $13,575 in dividends since I started. This page here is all of the different pages coming together in one place. So you can see in the month of June, in total, my entire portfolio earned $1,317 in dividends. Um, now this changes as I change securities and lately I've been changing the makeup of the asset allocation. So these dividends have actually been dropping off on a monthly basis because I've been adding in securities that only pay out every six months. So we'll jump back over to passive. Okay, so I'm gonna, I've scrolled down to the middle of the page here. You can see that I sold off 1,494 of VU. I also sold 1,535 of SCHD. I also sold $2,900 of HYLDU, which is HYLD, but in American funds. And then I also sold off $6,251 in HYLD in Canadian funds. Now, what I did with that money was that th those funds were earning me money. They're growing like VU is uh, the one of my biggest uh, growers which is great as far as overall growth. Uh, it does pay a dividend, but it's not really huge. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to introduce um, into the portfolio some time ago, these two funds here, AVUV and AVDV. They are small cap funds. Now, beginner knowledge here, so bear with me. The S&P 500 is top 500 companies in the United States. And that's, you know, like the companies like Apple, Amazon, Google and so on and so forth. Now that fund grows and those individual stock positions will grow quite significantly. With individual stocks, you have to know what you're doing to invest properly at the right time in order to you know, maximize growth. Where I invest in ETFs and the ETF uh, does decently well for me as returns, especially as a beginner. But investing all your money in the top performing companies, let's take um, Amazon for instance, or actually let's talk about Apple a little bit. So Apple, does Apple have a max end life as far as a company? Will they max out and all of a sudden the share price maybe stall out? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, they've grown for a really long time, so it's possible uh, that might not happen, but it's very possible it could happen. And from some of the podcasts and stuff I listen to, 
it's better to hedge some of your money towards companies that are up and comers. Apple was an up and comer many, many years ago. These two funds, AVDV and AVUV, uh, help with that. Now, I do have some uh, other emerging market funds as well that I've introduced. Again, creating sort of this all-in-one effect uh, here. So what I did with all those funds is, number one, I sold, they were mostly Canadian funds except the HYLDU. Then I used, um, I converted those funds uh, over to US funds. Now, I did get hit with that 1.5% conversion fee. The reason for that is the money exists within the Wealthsimple account already. I can't use Norbit Gamut or some other method to convert the money. I had to bite the bullet and convert it. But when I think about it, it's a long-term investment. So once it's converted and once it's invested, it's not going anywhere. It will grow. And I'm pretty confident that that 1.5% that I had to pay will eventually come back in uh, great value. So you can see here that I ended up buying uh, a lot of AVUV, AVDV, uh, which was the biggest change in this account. Um, at the end of the month here, we bought a bunch of dividends. You can see VRE, HYLD, REI. Um, and again, I track all of those. We've seen that in the other side. So the dilemma that I have right now is I talked about my spousal account is essentially I'm facing the same decision there. I have a large amount in HYLD, which is outside of that asset allocation that I set up. And I'm not sure that I want to leave that money invested like that. I'm still chewing the fat on a little bit. So if you have some input uh, on the decisions that I made in the account that I just showed you where I sold off uh, HYLD and then reinvested it in these small cap stocks, I'd be interested to hear uh, your views, especially if you're a beginner like me. But if you're experienced, I I'm perfectly willing to hear you out as well. So uh, that's going to be something that I'll think about and hopefully maybe have it sorted out by the next monthly update that I do. All right, folks, if you made it to this part of the video, thank you very much. Uh, this channel has grown immensely uh, over the last uh, little over a year that I've been doing this. Now, for me, I'm not doing this to you know, tell you what to do. I'm doing it to A, motivate myself, share my experiences, and hopefully you'll learn something from the things that I'm sharing. So if you're not subscribed to this channel, I'd really appreciate hitting that subscribe. We're growing day by day. There's uh, subscriber count seems to grow slow and steady. Uh, that's fantastic. Uh, what also really helps is if you hit that like um, and, and make a comment or even share um, the videos with some other beginners that you know or, or you know, I guess some people might even get uh, some comic relief out of some of the videos that I've done because if you go back and look at them, there were some that even I shake my head and think, oh boy, that wasn't the best video in the world. But hey, that's what YouTube is all about. It's a creator's platform to come out and, and share um, sometimes it's your passion and for me right now this is a big passion now I mentioned it before this channel is not monetized that's not really the goal of the channel uh, but if you really want to find a way to support it like I said um, you, you can uh, use the links check out the video description below but I also have um, a link here and I'll put up on the screen you can buy me a coffee. Uh, it does take a fair bit of time to both shoot and edit the videos so if you want to support me in my efforts because you enjoy the content you can use this link here and buy me a coffee. All right, so that's gonna wrap things up for this video. Um, again, thanks very much for watching, sticking around to the end, drop some comments, uh, let me know what's going on in your portfolio and we'll see you in the next video.